Hello dear students, in this video we are going to discuss about metallurgy and extracting metals. We know that metals are very important to us as many objects in our day to day life they are made up of metals. For examples, utensils that we have in our kitchen or the grills that we have in our balcony. They are made up of some or the other metals. These metals are found either in their compound state or in their native state under the sea or under the ground. Now, what is compound state and native state? Note that a metal which is highly reactive in nature will always form its compound and hence we will be getting that metal in its compound form. For example, iron. Iron being a reactive metal, we always have compounds of iron and not pure form of iron when we extract it. On the other hand, when we are talking about native states of metal, you can understand that metals like silver, gold, they are least reactive and hence we always get them in their purest form. Um, not exactly in purest form, but not in the compound state. They are mixed with impurities like silica etc which can be easily removed out and we get pure metals out of it. Now, extracting pure metal from their ores is known as metallurgy. So when I am talking about compound state of metals, from that compound if I want to separate pure metal then the process is known as metallurgy. Next we have ores of metals. Ores are the substances from which pure metals are extracted economically. For example, iron, ore of iron is known as hematite or aluminium, ore of aluminium is bauxite. Now what does this economically word means here? See when I am talking about iron, I have many compounds of iron from which I can extract it. For example, hematite, magnetite etc. But why we always choose hematite? Because the content of iron that I get from hematite is maximum and hence it is economical process for me. Next we are going to discuss about factors that we consider before extracting metals. The first and foremost factor that we have is economic aspect of extracting metal. While extracting metal, I need to consider that how much ore I am going to get after extracting or continuing the process of extraction. Second, whenever I extract the ore, how much pure metal I am going to get out of that ore. And third factor is how much cost I am going to invest to purify that metal and how much returns, economic returns I am going to get after selling that pure form of metal. These are economic aspects that we have to consider while deciding that we should extract a metal from a particular place or not. Another aspect is social aspect. Once we decide on the location where the extraction plant will be set up, we also have to consider that how the local people in that area will be accepting the extraction plant. They might get worried that the natural resources and landscapes would get spoiled in their area and hence they would object the process. Or on the other side, they may think that mining will create jobs in their area and hence they would accept it. So these are the economic and social aspects that we have to consider before setting up the extraction plant. In the next part of the video, we are going to discuss about process of extractions of metals based on metal reactivity series. Once the ores are extracted, next step is to extract pure metals from the ore. Extraction process for a particular metal depends on position of that metal in the metal reactivity series. You can see metal reactivity series in the diagram given alongside. Note that we cannot sacrifice one metal to obtain another metal. 
That means if I see in the reactivity series, magnesium is above aluminium in the reactivity series. So if I'm having compound of aluminium, that is aluminium oxide, I can react it with magnesium. Magnesium will displace aluminium from its compound and I will be having pure form of aluminium. But I will be wasting magnesium here as magnesium will form its oxide. So I said to obtain aluminium, I cannot sacrifice pure form of magnesium. Here, carbon present in the metal reactivity series comes to our rescue. Note that carbon is not the part of metal reactivity series, but we have just added it to represent its reactivity comparing with other metals. Now, carbon can displace compounds of metals which are below itself in the metal reactivity series. For example, iron or zinc. We know that ore of iron is hematite that is iron oxide Fe2O3. We can react it with carbon monoxide as carbon monoxide is a reducing agent. That means it will take oxygen from iron oxide. Once carbon monoxide reacts with iron oxide, we will be having pure iron and carbon dioxide. And so here I will get pure form of iron from hematite. Second we have is zinc from zinc oxide. Now here again zinc oxide or zinc is below carbon in the metal reactivity series and hence carbon or carbon monoxide can displace zinc from its oxide. Once zinc oxide reacts with carbon, we will be getting pure form of zinc and carbon dioxide. Note that the processes are known as reduction processes. That means we are reducing metal oxides to form pure metals. For this reduction process, we can use carbon or carbon monoxide, but not carbon dioxide. Reason is that carbon or carbon monoxide has space to occupy more oxygen. But carbon dioxide is a saturated compound and hence it will not be accepting any more oxygen. So if I use carbon dioxide, it will not be able to displace zinc from its compound. So we have to use either carbon or carbon monoxide only. Now this is about metals which are below carbon in the reactivity series. What about the metals which are above carbon in the reactivity series? For example, aluminium. For the metals which are above carbon in the reactivity series, we have to use strong processes like electrolysis for their extraction. So for aluminium, ore of aluminium is bauxite that is Al2O3. I have to carry out electrolysis for separating aluminium from aluminium oxide. When I carry out electrolysis process, I will be obtaining aluminium on the cathode as it is positive ion and oxygen at the anode as it is a negative ion. So here I understand that metals which are present below carbon in the reactivity series, they can be reduced from their oxides by using carbon or carbon monoxide. But the metals which are above carbon in the reactivity series, to separate them from their oxides, we have to do electrolysis. In our next videos for this chapter, Extracting Metals, we are going to discuss about extraction processes for different metals in detail. Thank you.